Hey, what's up guys? And welcome back to my channel. So today I'm super excited. We are gonna be talking about how to sound like the great McCoy Tyner. So McCoy is definitely one of my favorites because to me, he's one of the pianists who ended up developing one of the single most unique styles of any of the piano greats. So if you actually have not yet seen my videos about pentatonic voicings or dominant pentatonic voicings, I highly recommend that you check those out either before or after watching this video. Um, those are a huge staple of his harmonic vocabulary. But today we're gonna be diving into his melodic vocabulary. How was I doing those pentatonic lines that you heard in the intro to this video? So without further ado guys, let's dive right into the theory behind this stuff. So guys, one common thing that we talk about is the pentatonic scale, right? And the major, normal, most obvious pentatonic scale looks like this in the key of C. It's one, two, three, five, six, five, three, two, one, right? The scale that we're gonna be concerned with here today is actually the dominant pentatonic scale. And we're gonna see just how much you can actually do with just that scale. It's actually pretty mind blowing. So the dominant pentatonic scale looks like this. One, two, three, five, flat seven, five, three, two, one. Okay, so one of the first steps that we're gonna to wanna to do for really learning this is being able to practice this scale starting on different degrees of the scale. So instead of just starting on one, we're gonna start on two now. And then we're gonna to go to three. Start on five. Then we're gonna start on flat seven. So if all we did was learn that exercise, check out how awesome this sounds. Right, that's it. And you can also learn it going back down and it just sounds amazing. But what if now we actually broke this scale down into pieces of four instead? And this is, this is gonna be key. We're gonna go into this more in a second. But so we're gonna do just four notes at a time. So one, two, three, five, then we'll keep going up, then we'll do two, three, five, flat seven, then we'll start on three, three, five, flat seven, one, right, and so on. So that's gonna sound like this. Pretty awesome, right? And now we can also do that descending. So once you practice that ascending, we can also do that descending. So maybe we start on one, but descending, and it sounds like this. Right, so it's such a cool sound already. Now, really quickly guys, I just wanna shout out a new product that I just released that actually has some runs that are very similar to these McCoy Tyner pentatonic runs. That's called 30 Sick Runs and Arpeggios, and it is some of my absolute favorite and absolute best runs for jazz piano in general. So definitely be sure to check that out and uh, try to add those to your jazz vocabulary. All right, thanks guys, let's get back into the lesson. But now I wanna talk about a really important concept here, and that is the concept of melodic cells. So we're not gonna get super, super deep into melodic cells today, but I'm gonna tell you just some of the basic theory, okay? So a melodic cell is usually a grouping of four notes. So what we just did was play a few different melodic cells. So if we start with just four notes here, we could start with one, two, three, five. And that right there is our starting point cell. But the interesting thing about these is that then we can actually do different permutations. So what do I mean by that? Literally, we're just putting the notes in a different order. So we could do, again, we're working with one, two, three, and five, but we could do two, three, five, one, or we could do three, two, five, one, right? So we're just having these different little cells of the same four notes in different orders. And so we have these different little permutations as they're called. So what if we actually took two starting cells? We do one, two, three, five, and then we do three, five, flat, seven, one. Those are our two starting cells. So we could do Cool, that's a pretty awesome lick already. So you're starting to see how we're using these cells, we start to take this dominant pentatonic scale and we're actually building some really interesting lines just with these little cell permutations. What if we actually added in a third cell? So we do one, two, three, five, three, two, flat seven, one, 
and then five flat seven one two. And we could do these cells. So at their most basic level, Cool, all right, so what if we just repeat that as almost like an arpeggio going up the keyboard? That's gonna sound like this. So that's already pretty awesome. We could also do that down. And that's already sounding pretty, pretty awesome. So what we can do is actually practice different permutations of these cells, and once we're able to combine them, it's gonna sound really, really interesting. So that's pretty cool and it's a lot of fun. Now, a super quick trick that we can actually add to this process is then taking those cells out of the original key. So one simple thing we can do that McCoy would do is we literally just move up to the dominant uh, pentatonic scale a half step above. So if we're in C, right? Then we move up to a D flat That sounds pretty awesome, right? Um, so that's a really, really fun thing we can do, and I highly recommend that you guys try that out because it sounds pretty amazing. All right, so we've talked about this dominant pentatonic scale and all of the cool improvisational things we can do with it, but what if we actually could use that scale for other chords as well? Now, if you've seen my dominant pentatonic voicings video, you'll see that this is actually a very similar concept. What we can do now is take a look at the scale. Let's take a look at some of the inversions of the scale as we were before. So that's the basic one, right? What if we do this? Well, that looks a lot like a an E half diminished chord. Right? So it actually works great as an E half diminished uh, improvisational scale as well. Let's see what else we can come up with. All right, so what was I doing there? That was actually G minor six. So if you have a, a minor voicing, especially a minor six chord, you can actually play this same exact scale, the same exact melodic cells, the same permutations, and it's gonna sound really, really awesome. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. The power of this one dominant pentatonic scale suddenly opens up the whole world of, of studying McCoy Tyner's playing and being able to understand what he is doing with that right hand. All right, guys, well, that sums up what we're talking about today in the video. I hope this really helped illuminate some really important information about how McCoy Tyner was able to form those incredible pentatonic lines. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and hitting the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. All right, guys, thanks so much, and I will see you next week with more.